Okay, it is time for something really different. I was just browsing the internet and um, somehow stumbled upon like the fact that people um, will make their own audiobook, basically, and just post it on YouTube in audio clips and you can listen through it. And I thought that was pretty interesting because I like reading and whatnot. Um, and somehow I got to this book um, and it's the one I'm going to be uh, reading to you all. And it is, it is not an amazing book. It is, I, I don't even know how to explain it exactly, but it is <laughs> basically a chiclet, if you know what chiclet is. Um, but if you don't, chiclet is basically stuff written for girls. Um, and I mean, that could be fine. There are some really good examples of chiclet, such as like uh, Bridget Jones' Diary. But most of it is stupid. Most of it is just this washed out drivel that nobody should be reading but I guess certain people in the demographic like it um the stories usually just revolve around you know girls being all oh my god I need to marry this boy or whatever or something like he's the one even though we've never talked or anything ever in our entire lives he's the one um basically like that that's what all these books are about <laughs> generally so it kind of sucks and this book is not very good, at least in my opinion. That's just what I think. But <laughs> I thought it was pretty good, so I wanted to, you know, just sort of read it and be a little fun with it because it's, you know, I don't think you should take this book seriously. Just have fun with it and mess around. Um, it's, okay, I'll just start this now after that little intro thing. It's uh, Gamer Girl by Mari Mancusi, who is a pretty nice person. And, uh, you know, uh, apparently she's written adult books and stuff, too. Not just, like, chiclet for middle schoolers. So, you know, maybe check that out sometime. I don't know. But, anyway, yeah, okay. Gamer Girl. Chapter 1. Grandma's house was a study of crystal and glass and attained 1,153 unicorns. I knew, because I counted one drizzly, dreary Thanksgiving when we were stuck inside waiting for the world's slowest turkey to brown. Horned beasts of crystal, glass, china, wood. She called them her babies and treasured them more than dwindling life savings. And dwindling mainly due to her unicorn habit. You wouldn't believe the prices of those things from the Franklin Mint. Whenever we'd come over, she'd sit me down and show me her favorites. She had a lot of favorites. It was fine and tolerable when we lived an hour away and just saw her once a year. Over the river and through the woods and all that. But now we were living with her in her museum-like house, surrounded by unicorns. I suppose my story isn't unique. After all, half marriages end in divorce, or so they say. Maybe I should count my blessings that Mom and Dad stuck it out as long as they did. Still, having to vacate our uber-hip Back Bay Boston brownstone, leaving my private school and friends behind, and moving to unicorn land, all in the middle of my sophomore year, was a bit much. But I had no choice. Mom and Dad weren't speaking, unless they were yelling. Neither one could afford the mortgage on the brownstone, so they smacked down for a sale sign and split. Dad to a smaller apartment down the street, and Mom and me and my eight-year-old sister Emily to New Hampshire, to Grandmother's house we go. I can't even begin to tell you how painful the last days of my old school was. Saying goodbye to all my beloved teachers, promising my friends I'd IM and text them every possible second, cleaning out my locker, and tearing down the My Chemical Romance poster I'd stuck on the inside door the first day of the school year. I'd been so full of hopes and dreams for the year back then. I was going to join the art club, write for the school paper, and, of course, make Ashley's older brother, David Silverman, my boyfriend. Okay, that last one was a bit of a long shot. But you couldn't blame a girl for being goal-oriented, could you? It was going back to the best year ever. Now, four months later, it was growing up to be the worst Maddie, you'd better get down here or you'll miss the bus, Grandma called from downstairs, bringing me back to my hellish reality, a.k.a. my first day at Hannah Dustin High School. There were prisoners on death row more excited than about their pending visit with the electric chair than I was about my enrollment. I mean, hello? First off, there was a bus, an actual bus, to take me from my middle-of-nowhere grandma's house to my still middle-of-nowhere school. Back home, I always walked. 
met my friends at Dunkin' Donuts for French <laughs> crawlers and coffee, then giggled and gossiped all the way to campus, Boston Academy. Now I'd actually have to board a smelly, fume-filled, environment-destroying bus to get to school. At least I was getting my license in a few weeks when I turned 16, though my chances of getting Grandma to lend me the car were slim to none. My cell buzzed, scattering all thoughts of transportation. I glanced down to see the text from Caitlin. Good luck on first day. I smiled, feeling a tiny bit better. At least I had my friends. Sure. They were farther away from me now, but still cared. I punched in Caitlin's number. Hey, girl, I said into the phone after she answered. Oh, hey, Mads, how's it going? How's, how are the burbs? They arrest you for not wearing the gap yet? Turn your mom into the Stepford wife? Caitlin had a habit of asking at least four questions in the same breath, making it impossible to answer any of them. Hardy har har, I replied. You are too funny. Whatever. At least I'm not funny looking. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Haven't looked into the mirror lately, have you? I asked with mock sympathy. I'm looking now, baby. And I look fine. Damn fine. I grinned, picturing my best friend dancing in front of a mirror as she was known to do, flaunting all that God had given her to anyone who cared to look. Caitlin was born without the insecurity gene. She dyed her hair pink and pierced her own nose in seventh grade. Her mother was totally cool with it, too, saying that girls needed to express themselves early in life so they could blossom into healthy, self-sufficient women who didn't need a man to compete to complete them. Caitlin's mother was also divorced after her husband ran off to Vegas with his secretary. Some believe she was still a bit bitter about the whole thing. Hmm. Maybe my divorced mom would... Uh, would now let me explore the manic panic hair color rainbow too. It'd be so cool to get some pink streaks in my hair. One time, Caitlin and I went to Harvard Square after school and got the clip-on kind. Mom nearly had a heart attack until she found out they weren't real. Madeline, Grandma said again, this time sounding more insistent. I groaned. Sorry, Kate. has got to run before Grandma has kittens and starts sneezing to death. Okay, no prob, Caitlin said. Good luck today. I hope you meet tons of uber cool rock girls and sexy, sexy bad boys. I'll settle for anyone not openly worshipping the gods of Abram Zombie. I replied with a laugh. I'll miss you guys. You don't have too much fun without me. Wouldn't dream of it. We'll mourn you all day and fast in your honor at lunchtime. Unless they're serving pizza, of course. If they're serving pizza, consider yourself gone and forgotten. Fair enough. I'll call you after school to let you know how it went. Cool. Later, Gator. I pressed end grabbed my hoodie, and vacated the Pepto-Bismol colored, unicorn-themed bedroom Grandma had stuck me in. Pretty nauseating, let me tell you. Though I couldn't exactly complain. After all, originally, she wanted me to share it with Emily. I think they would have stabbed myself with a unicorn horn if I had to bunk up with my little sis. Lucky for me, Emily wasn't so keen on the idea either, and used her big mouth to voice her displeasure, repeatedly. So Grandma cleaned out her sewing room and declared it Emily's. Get out a gift for getting exactly what she wanted. I envied her. That. I started down the shag carpeted stairs and found Grandma standing in the unicorn infested living room below, a sentry guarding the path to freedom. And let's just say her stern, disapproving look could have picked me up. What? Disapproving look could have been picked up by a satellite. <laughs> I glanced around for Mom, but she was nowhere to be found. Must have already left for work. Not good. I bit my lower lip, knowing exactly what was coming before that woman opened her mouth. You're wearing that to school? Uh, yes. I really couldn't think of anything else to say. I prayed I was wrong about mom being at work and that she'd suddenly come around the corner and assure grandma that my look was perfectly acceptable for, t for a 21st century teen. But no luck. Okay, fine. Maybe I should have dressed a tad more conservative. We were in the suburbs after, after all. But image was everything in high school, and I felt I needed to make the appropriate this is who I am statement from day one to attract the right friends. Sad but true. So I donned a short plaid skirt paired with Doc Martin boots and a zip-up hoodie over my puka, the goblin cat, baby doll tee. It's a gothy, but approachable. At least to me. Grandma was obviously getting a different message as she fanned herself with a wrinkly hand, shaking her head in disbelief. Eesh, you'd have thought I'd come downstairs in Britney Spears' last VMA outfit. <laughs> Madeline Ann, you look like a dead prostitute, she declared. 
I opened my mouth to defend and retort, but reluctantly closed it again. We'd been drooled by mom since day one not to talk back to grandma. After all, she's so nice to let us live here. We need to respect her and her rules.